Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Let's Play Elite Dangerous. So we're just starting a new game, haven't played this game in many years, so... And we're going to do the intro tutorial, so the first episode I'm going to do it all at once, so... Ooh. Most pilots assigned to me earn their license, so as long as you follow my instructions, you'll be a commander in no time. <laughs> We're gonna fail, aren't we? Oh, and uh, before you ask, I may sound like an imperial, but uh, I'm actually from an independent system. Oh, here we go. Today we'll be covering the basics of flight control, combat, and frame shift drive use. This sidewinder has been installed with a specialized computer that'll take control at certain points. Mostly you'll follow a series of objectives to guide your actions. These are shown in the info panel at the top right of the head-up display. Okay, you're good to go. Select auto-launch from the options ahead of you when you're ready. Okay, let's do this. Auto-launch, please. Wow, that's loud. Auto-launch sequence underway. The beauty of auto-launch is that you can relax and enjoy the view. One of the ways that technology allows us to appreciate the good things in life. <laughs> Other applicants are departing for their own evaluations, but this isn't a race. Each of the coming stages can be completed. Boost, at boost, boost. Waiting in queue. I wonder if they scripted this all so it's always the same every time you start a new game. Probably. That's pretty cool looking. I was going to say, who docks upside down, but there's docking ports, I think, all around the thing, so that kind of makes sense. And what is upside down in space? The graphics are pretty intense, though. <laughs> I love it. That's beautiful. Oh, look at this little station over here on the side. That's really cool. wonder if we're going to have more, like, uses out of stations way down the road, like, construction and stuff. For so long, humanity gazed up at the stars in wonder. We're not distracted by one of Earth's many wars. And now, we glide between them without a second thought. Hmm. Ah, here we are. Your first task is to demonstrate basic ship movements. The ship's trajectory is primarily controlled by pitch, yaw, and roll. Perform each of these now. Um, guess this way? Oh, there we go. Whee! And then up and down, I guess, so... There you Good. go. Now increase your throttle to accelerate forwards. There you go. Decrease the throttle to resume a stationary position. Your throttle can also be pulled back from zero to engage reverse thrust. Yeah. As before, push the throttle in the opposite direction to cease moving. Inputs confirmed. Looks like you've got the hang of individual controls. Let's see if you can put them all together. Your next task is to guide your ship through a series of checkpoints. Okay. Ooh, I like checkpoints. Unless it's like time trial, <laughs> then I would suck at it. The course weaves through an orbital structure and is designed for the novice pilot. This will be interesting. I'm playing X4 recently a lot, and then uh, trying these controls out. I actually ahead of time went into the controls and changed my acceleration up and down on my mouse key, uh, mouse thing, for example. And then your thrusters up and down WS instead. Of like some weird one, it was like Z and X, or I forget what it was, but. And we're off. There's no time limit, so maintain a comfortable speed while you familiarize yourself with the controls. So the controls are kind of similar. The only thing I had to do, though, I had to change. Um, so when you accelerate using your mouse one, it was so fine that it just didn't really move. So what I had to do is change it by ten percent. So I wish you could do it smaller. Oh, there you go. So they move in increments of 10%, which I think should be fine for most things anyways. There might be some speed match or something I can use later if I need it for something more finer, but uh, I wish it let you do it like a percent or... It's good 
practice to consider the angle and speed of your approach. See the blue marker beside the throttle gauge. This indicates the optimum turning speed. Where's that? Oh, down there. Oh, I see it. So this is like, right in the center is like your optimal turning, I guess, so you can turn better. Versus it being too slow or too fast. That makes sense. They, they show you kind of roughly like they, the icons align roughly to what it should look like when you're coming into it as well, which is kind of cool. Gives you an idea of like how you should approach it. Or by the time you get there, how you should have probably had approached it. <laughs> you're approaching a particularly sharp turn, so I advise slowing down to prevent any mishaps. There you go. That's cool. Those sound effects are pretty cool. It's very noisy space, huh? Well, they say, like, if it got to the point where humans were this far into space anyways, like, you know, tech-wise, we'd probably have, like, a surround system built in our cockpit, cockpit to kind of give us, like, auditorial feedback to know, like, you know, different things, like you're coming close to things, like frequencies and, you know, vibrations or whatever, you know? increases your speed. But use it wisely. Whee. What does that move me speed wise? Can't even see my speed. Oh, there it is. That's the last checkpoint. Awesome. The Sidewinder is an agile craft, and you handled it well. A new icon has appeared on the sensor display in the center of your dashboard. Um, this represents an oh, that square beacon, thing, which you'll soon scan as part of your evaluation. I guess square if we can turn. Um, T to target, okay. You're going to use your ship's data link scanner to analyze the beacon, but you need to deploy hard points first. Uh, you. We're gonna shoot it, yeah! Most external modules are installed on hard points, including weapons. Control is back with you. That's, that seems unsafe. Small, so you, you, you may passively scan us. Any Watch aggressive moves will blow you up. Yeah, no problem. I'm just gonna... I'm just gonna pull out my weapons to scan you, please. You kind of. You can scan the beacon now. No, I need to. How do you find your thing? How do you know where you're? Wait, how do you? Oh man, this is not easy. Where's the target? Is there no way to like see the target on the screen? I'm used to like little arrows somewhere. Okay, so there we go. Okay, guess you're kind of stuck on the radar. It's a very unique way of doing it. Okay, so we're supposed to just shoot it, basically. Oh, we hold down on it? Oh, that's cool. Well done. The data link scanner is a versatile tool that connects with network interfaces and various data points. You need to move to another area. Apparently this is well anchored in space. Pilot. Rather than travel for the next year using your thrusters, you oh, can there's a target the thing now there, I see. Increase your speed by a few orders of magnitude. So certain things as a... ensure that the ship is correctly okay. secured. Your landing gear, cargo scoop, and hard points go. must all be retracted. That's cool. What does it look like the opposite way? Oh, it goes hollow. Okay, so you know you're on the opposite side if it's hollow. So right around where it shows my 35% heat, that's the target thing there. Okay. Okay. Uh, we didn't. I didn't pay attention. Oh, retract the hard points. When you're ready, throttle up and engage super cruise. If you tell me the key, there you go, J. Drive charging. There you go. All readouts look good. Oops. You're now accelerating towards a velocity comparative to the speed of light, measured in C. Supercruise is used to navigate within a star system, allowing you to cover huh. significant distances in minutes. Usually you'll retain control in Supercruise, but on this occasion your ship's computer is following a preset path. Commander recruit. <laughs> yourself with a couple of the cockpit panels available to you. In the top left of your HUD is the comms panel, which displays pilot communications and contacts across several channels. Hello. The top right, that's your info panel, entries here mostly relate to your ship's status, computer messages, and events huh. happening around you. Different time. 
it's 10 10 25 when I'm recording this welcome to light speed 1c was that parsec or something no one what is 1c maybe no how do they measure I'm gonna have to look that up later well I feel like we're going a little fat oh hello oh angel things flying around I guess other ships probably watch the distance and speed markers on the dashboard these are used to help you accurately disengage at your destination where oh on the left side okay I don't think I have any control but I assume your you'd want to bring down your speed of combat. several static and mobile targets will be provided around the decommissioned megaship will also cover some situational information about weaponry and target tracking and yes you'll get to shoot those weapons you saw earlier <laughs> The voice acting for this tutorial thing is pretty good, actually. Astronomical bodies have a gravitational effect on the FSD, reducing your ship's speed. The closer the body, the greater the effect. Okay, buddy. Ooh. The frame shift drive is disengaged. Welcome to the combat zone. Before you start shooting, however, Wanna try shoot. analyzing the mega ship with a data link scanner. Um. What was it? Oh, it's like before, right? Okay. So we're gonna shoot them, which seems. Oh, this one's a little longer to pull. There you go. you're unfamiliar with to learn more about them. I wonder why this Next, is like this now. Next, you need to activate now. your weapons by cycling to a different fire group. I wonder why it says one up the top. It's because I played with something and now it's like screwed up forever. Local, no fires. Oh, okay. Weird. Okay, so what am I supposed to do? Fire group. Um, press N key. Oh, multi cannon and blast laser. Allow you to manage your hard points efficiently. Let's begin the combat evaluation. Yes, please. Destroy several of the canisters. Several. So seven? I'll be counting seven. Thrusters are particularly Five. useful for navigating around. That's a few. Why not give them a try? Your cannon will automatically reload until the ammunition supply runs out. Meanwhile, your laser will fire until the capacitor is depleted, at which point it will need to recharge. Quota achieved. Let's dial up the challenge a notch, shall oh, we? I want to shoot more. An unmanned craft has arrived nearby. These drones are used oh, just show a tar target on the screen, maybe. Unless that's the tutorial base. Bring the craft into your sights and open fire. Oh, let's so smash into him. Oh, oh, oh. Let your weapons do the work. There's no need to ram your opponent. So that was fun. Nice work. You may have noticed that multi cannons are effective against unshielded targets. Did I? Another craft has arrived. This one is fitted with a shield generator. Helpfully, your burst laser is a thermal weapon, which excels at stripping away a target's shields. I'll be the judge of that. Let's see if he's right in any way. I'll be judging him today. Oh, that is some cool ass sound effects. Okay, so let's see what this guy has to offer here. Okay, so he said lasers would be better. So look at our look at the thing there. We're hardly we're almost getting one line done, right? It's doing nothing. Now let's shoot him with this thing. Oh yeah, already it's making a huge difference. Okay, so when we, he gets down, let's check this. Look at this. Look at how fast it's going down. Now let's try this gun. Oh yeah. So yeah, massive difference. Like night and day difference. I'm reloading, I think. Or is it overheating? Reloading maybe. There you go, he's gone. I guess once he blows up, you might as well save your ammunition. 
consider me impressed. I'm your impressed. Your final target has dropped into the area. This time your opponent will fight back, but its damage capability has been greatly reduced. Your target will not react until it registers shield damage. Engage when ready. So we get to go in. So using both weapons at this point would probably work well. I wonder if I, like, stupid idea. I want to try something here. So, is there an actual force reload, I wonder? Oh well. Okay, let's do this. Are you supposed to, like, target them first and scan them and make sure that you're allowed to fire them or something, if I remember? Bail. Bail your ship so I can take it for myself. I guess that doesn't exist in the game. Just farm, like, the best ships in the game all day long. <laughs> that was the last target. Even if you're planning on a peaceful career, understanding the basics of combat is vital for a pilot's long-term survival. Damn. For advanced combat information, you should refer to the pilot's handbook, which we'll cover in more Ooh. detail soon. I'll be good. I'll read that the later. The next step of your evaluation involves a hyperspace jump to a neighboring star system. On this occasion, your ship's computer has selected your destination for you. We'll cover selecting destinations manually soon. Okay. The mass lock indicator on the bottom right of the dashboard is active. This means a large object is in close proximity. Well, I have to hit you, don't I? Preventing you from engaging the FSD. Oh, I have to, to go. Oh, I see the bottom right mass lock. Oh, there we go. Safe distance away from the mega ship. And then what was it, J? I think. Yeah, J. The mass lock indicator has gone out. When you are ready to travel light years in seconds, engage the FSD. Oh, I did not mean to do that. I'm used to being able to use your mouse and in interfaces, but no. I still don't know why I have the thing here. I really screwed up on something. Ah! That is cool. Feels a little warm though. Holy crap, my eyes. Technology has made the task of leaping between star systems appear trivial. Never let the simplicity distract from the marvel humanity has Can achieved. I go like towards it and die? I feel like it's a bad idea. Station. This time we'll employ the supercruise assist module to guide your approach. Open the external interface panel to your left and select the navigation tab. Highlight the starport in the location list and then Oops. select Super Cruise Assist. Oh, okay. The second option. Where where am I going though? So this is where I am? Are those like oh are these like planets you can land maybe? I don't know. And then there's this one, so I think that's where we're going. Lost. The the you panel I can't time see time through it. With panel it's so freaking bright. Okay, we we got it. Okay. Selected, throttle up and aim towards your target. The compass to the left of the sensor display will help you orient yourself. Oh, so we're still in Super Cruise, I guess. Okay. Oh, there's another light. Can we target it? Your ship is now bound for Quello Station. Uh, oh yeah, we can. It seems Super Cruise Assist has disengaged. To resume Super Cruise Assist, return to the external interface panel on your left. Here, select Quello Station, then choose the second option, Super Oh, Cruise I see. Oops. You're gonna have to get used to these buttons here. I keep hitting Q and E, but it does more than that. I guess when I, I targeted off the side there, it did not like that. Be sure not to target anything else, or Super Cruise Assist will disengage again. <laughs> That's actually kind of cool. I knew what I did. Where were we? Ah, yes. Let's take a moment to review the interface panels either side of your chair. The external panel is primarily used to interact with the galaxy around you. For example, you can yeah. access maps, display contracts, and review nearby objects. Meanwhile, the internal panel displays information about you and your ship. Oh. You can adjust module functions, check your records, and access the code. I'm mostly harmless, things. mostly penniless, and mostly aimless, and mostly helpless. <laughs> oh, well, thanks a lot. I like that. Oh, this is so cool. New pilots often wonder what their first step into the galaxy should be. The pilot's handbook is a great source of help in this regard. It details a variety of professions and how to outfit your ship huh. for them. 
The handbook also offers advice on various ship functions that aren't covered in this evaluation. You can find the pilot's handbook in the codex, accessible on the home screen via the internal interface panel. Oh, we're coming near a planet, I think. Moving around you are FSD wakes. Your ship is also emitting one. The position of each correlates with their respective sensor display icons. In a moment, we'll be going through the docking process. This will That's have a cool docking permissions and a standard landing pad approach. Why can't I see anything here? What is this? What is going on? Oh, here we go. Oh, hold on. It appears Super Cruise Assist is inactive. But we're targeting it, aren't we? I think we're good. I'm so confused by this. What is that? Oh, and it is Super another ship? Once again. Follow the I think I screwed him up. Aha. Uh -huh. This is the final stretch. You'll dock here shortly, but I'd like you to position your ship near the starport's access corridor first. Okay, so approach. Starports are the backbone of humanity's operations Let's just go closer. throughout inhabited space. They provide mission boards, the commodities market, a number of specialized contacts. He probably wants like mass lock or something. So if you're mass locked, do we rotate with it? Never thought of that. Good. Ease off the throttle and hold position here. Oh, and try not to block the access corridor. It doesn't look like we rotate it with. Oh. We'll be using the docking computer for this landing. You can always dock manually in future, of course, but practice in a training simulation first. <laughs> Whichever Are there training use, simulations? All ships must seek docking permission before approaching a landing pad. To request docking permission, open your external interface panel and select the contacts tab. Then select Quello Station in the list, followed by request docking in the information panel. Docking permission authorized. Docking assist has been engaged. You've been assigned landing pad three. Ooh. The compass will point towards your designated pad. Why is the thing blinking so brightly Ships on the need bottom? To be within 7.5 kilometers of a starport for a docking request to be considered. Well, actually, yeah, it is. I still wish I knew what I did with the thing up here. <laughs> oh, you can go down there. Oh, here we go. Was that it? No. Maybe it's just how it is, my friends. It's just how it is. The docking computer will now demonstrate a safe landing procedure. Let's review what it's doing. It just blows up. Landing gear must be deployed. The related dashboard indicator lights up if this has been done. Landing gear deployed. How do you do landing gear? <laughs> Does not actually tell you how to, you know, do the landing gear. In a moment, the sensor display will switch to the precision approach display, which helps you accurately set belly down on the landing pad. Which I think is kind of similar. Yeah, I think this is somewhat similar to X4. This actually might look nicer. But, uh, X4 has something similar to this that I was using, so that's cool. So and the license is being assigned to you as I speak. We Ooh. just need to finalize your credentials. Enter the hangar to exit this evaluation. Uh, enter hangar. hangar. It's time to blaze your own trail across the galaxy. Ooh. The manner in which you do so is up to you. Blazing your own trail. So that ship we almost ran into that looked like it was literally a comet. That was pretty cool. Maybe that's what they mean by blazing it. Uh, so you get to enter your name. Um, we're just gonna, you know, pick Kane Hart. I guess this is what I had a long time ago. Um, I played this game, like, many years ago for, you know, a bit, but not really far. Like, I didn't do much. Uh, I don't even know if I did videos or anything on that, but, uh, you can pick male or female. We'll go female. Everyone likes a, a female Kane Hart. Uh, let's go to continue. And then, ooh, so you got a Horizon Sidewinder or a new Commander, uh, Sidewinder. Um, there's probably good things and bad things like, uh, let's see here. So you got top speeds, boost speeds, your FSD range. So I think this is like the jump. Uh, I don't know what laden versus unladen means. So don't ask. Sorry. Um, please tell though, <laughs> if you can explain it 
as for an idiot like me. Um, but I guess this is your range of like how far you can jump. So let's just say, you know, maybe on average, some systems are three light years. Maybe you can jump seven or eight light years with this, which is a good thing. Um, your shields are 40. Your this this is the how little like you have literally 40 points of shields and 60 shields of armor. Holy crap. Your hull mass is 25 ton, your cargo capacity is 4 ton, and your description is a stock sidewinder. And then there is the horizon one, which I believe this one will probably let you land on planets. Can I actually move this around? Oh, come on, devs. You don't let me actually rotate this around. That would have been so cool. Uh, 217. I wonder if that was slower or not. Anyways, 315 boost. I don't think it's much of a difference. You can see the uh, one range is a little lower. I forget if this is a little lower too. Probably. You got 40 shields, 60 armor. 25 mass, a hull mass, and cargo is 2 tons. I think the other one was 4 tons. So this holds a little less cargo. But I believe this has, oh, it says Sidewinder uh, kited, 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 uh, out for surface operations with a 2 ton cargo hold, a vehicle bay equipped with a SRV, and a planetary approach suite. Oh, cool. Okay. Um, that. That definitely sounds fun. Let's just do that. So we get to name our our ship. Holy crap. Uh, oh, man. I'm bad with this kind of stuff. Uh, what, do you, what do you name a ship? Like, uh, oh, man. Too many options there. <laughs> Screw you, devs. Uh, let's see here. Uh... It's a sidewinder. I don't know. Side. <laughs> sidewinder? I know that's so stupid. I, I'm used to playing games where you kind of label them in a way like. Maybe we call it. Let's just be immature then. Let's do immature. There you go. <laughs> we're doing a. We are doing an immature. Uh, anyways, uh, there you go. So there's my commander. <laughs> my license is pretty crappy, you know. Usually. You know where I come from. You have to show your face for your license plate. But uh, there you go. Oh, I guess we're loading now. Loading game. Galanet Audio. The new service provides audio. Blah, blah. Oh, that's not a cool. Well, thank you. Your pilot's I don't know. I got four. Issued, and you're free to traverse the galaxy as an independent pilot. Ooh. Before launching for the first time, allow me to quickly introduce the basic interface for mission contracts. Almost all pilots will use the mission board at some stage. Okay. A contract has been assigned to you. Active missions are displayed in the Transactions tab of the External Interface Panel. This time you'll need to travel to Mawson Dock in the Dromi system. Oh, okay. You can select these destinations on the navigation screen of the External Interface so Panel. So we need to go to a place called Dromi. practice your journey first, Mawson. I recommend the training simulations accessed via the Internal Interface Panel. Okay. Oh, there's the high... Select your comms panel Ooh. and scroll through the recorded text. I'll contact you at Mawson Dock if you decide to complete this mission. If you choose to take a different path, then I wish you luck, Commander. I was going to say, there's not a lot here, but this is trade and smuggling, so that's just part of it. Oh, there we go. Okay. Zeno hunt hunting? Is, it, is these like, like robots or something? Or is that something else? Reminds me of the Xenon on uh, X4. Huh, look at this. Commander. Discoveries. Oh, look at this. Your total discoveries. I like this. They're putting like... Um, uh, I'm an idiot. Why can't I think of the name? No Man's Sky touch to it. I love that. That is awesome. So we're in the inner Orion Spur. The outer Orion Spur. S galaxy Center. I thought it was going to be Center Galaxy. I feel like it'd be French, like it'd be literally flipped around that way. Um, I'm in Canada, so people like literally every time I see something in French, it's like literally besides, you know, changes the, the, the wording sometimes. Sometimes it just seems like they flip the, <laughs> I don't know why. Um, oh, look at this. This is me. Um, look at the stats. Session logs. Oh, this is so cool, though. I love this. I actually love like information and stats. It always feels so cool to see just random stats like this. I love it. Ew. Sorry, I'm I'm getting excited here. I know, I know. It's silly. Okay. Tourist beacons. So let's let's do what he wanted us to do, because it sounded like that would be like 
it's like completing a final mission or something. So I guess we get to do things that we've learned here. And then we'll call that the first episode. But this is really cool. You have to you have to understand there's going to be a lot of derpiness on this. I'm a new player. I'm going to try to learn as best as I can here and there. But uh, I'll never be perfect. There will be some deaths. There will be some disappointments. But uh, I guess you can't... How do you... I guess you're forced to auto-launch. I would have liked to hand-launch. But maybe you're not allowed when you first start out. Oh, thank you, Chekhov. Chekhovsky or whatever. He, d he did have that accent. Which is sad because he, he passed away in the... Freaking getting ran over by your own SUV like the hell this world is coming to. Okay. I guess now we can get out of there. Oh, so we're going to have to set. So let's get used to this. We're going to have to set our way to that. So what was that place again? We had to go to a place called Dromi. So, mm, I guess this is the system we're in now, I guess. I don't know how that works. And I guess we're at this station right now. I'm assuming that's what those are. I'm assuming these are landable. That's the only thing I could come up with, like, what that means. Oh, here you go. So, these must be systems nearby. Oh, I see. So, this is probably, like, so you know how we have a certain distance that we can go? These are probably all the ones within nearby-ish, maybe? Uh, oh, no, maybe it's uh, something else. This one says exceeds mass. Huh. And there's your map, too. Okay, so you can go here now, and then we can lock and... Okay, lock destination. Lock and engage. Uh, okay, let's try that one. I feel like I'm not pointing to it, to be honest. Oh, no, we're, like, literally on the opposite right now. Oh, no, I don't know if this is a good idea. Go, go, go. Oh, we're good now. I guess if you turn fast enough, you're fine. So this is jumping. This isn't, um, yeah. So this is jumping from another system to another. It's not Super Cruise. And then once we land, I think Super Cruise is enabled from what we saw. Okay. And then what we have to do is hit one and we go to our navigate. Oops, this is gonna take a while. Oh no. Oh, sorry, we're already in the ability to move things around, and then- Oh, okay, here's the place. Oh no, I didn't mean to do that. <laughs> It'll take me a while to get used to these controls, that's for sure. Is that- okay, we're aligned, okay. I'm assuming you get too close- oh yeah, look at 58%, 61%. There you go, 63 Yeah, don't get too close, it doesn't like that. I think I actually slowed ourselves down too. So it's Super Cruise Assistant Active. So this is, I think, different than what I remember. Or maybe this was always the case. I don't know. Maybe that always was the assistant. I feel like, well, I guess maybe it is. I don't know. I feel like we changed our speeds, but this one does all the speed for you. So maybe that's the idea of it. It's kind of like a more of a hands-on approach. Oh! <laughs> that kind of scared me, sorry. Okay. Is that a ring around the planet or something? It looks like a ring, I can't tell. Oh yeah, I think that's a ring. Ooh, it's always around this ring planet somewhere. So if you hit the ring, I think we'd get screwed. So don't- oh, sorry, I won't go off the side. Where am I supposed to go? Like. Is it before the ring? Is it under the ring? Oh, no, no. Oh, I see. I see. So we're gonna, like, go around. Oh, I get it. We're going around. It's actually kind of cool. There's a signal there, but we won't get distracted by that right now. So I guess your job is to kind of, you know, avoid the obstacles. <laughs> Ooh. Okay. How the hell do you dock on this thing? Okay, so. Um. Oop. There you go, I think. 
Did you get in trouble if you speed or something, didn't you? Or maybe not? And I keep saying slow down. Maybe I'll just stop moving. Oh, okay. Wow. <laughs> it's like slow down and it just goes into full boost. It's like, okay, okay. You can do that, I can't, I can't apparently. I kind of want to do my, my own docking, but if I remember, when I played this game originally, I think I died over and over and over and over like a million times just trying to do it myself. And I think you get like, well, you die anyways, but I think you can get in a lot of trouble if you smash into stuff too. And I actually, I think if you stay inside like you loiter, they, they'll destroy you. There's a bunch of rules, basically. You get in a lot of trouble. Defend humanity. <laughs> well, thank you. Oh, look at the vehicles. Oh, that's so cool. Well done. To complete the mission, access starport services from the menu in the center of your dashboard. Then select the mission board from the general services list on the left of the presented screen. Oh, hello. You'll be able to hand in your assigned mission to the Pilots Federation representative here. Are you this the guy? Formally complete the mission. Oh, hello. So what was this mission called? Out into the... Out into the black. Okay! Uh, moving on here. So let's hand that in. Awesome, thank you. Well done, Commander. You've proven that you can travel between systems Interesting. and navigate the mission board. Economy state. From this point on, you'll be choosing your own mission. Security state. A variety of contracts are available throughout the galaxy that require a skilled pilot. Once again... There are training missions available to practice a variety of controls and challenges. The pilot's handbook, found in the internal interface panel, also provides a wealth of advice on most professions. Wait. I'll so look forward to watching your progress, Commander. Thank you. Make us proud. So the, the R Costa, signing off. So influence here, you can set influence. So I guess these guys offer influence. Some materials, no materials, but you still show them. I guess it just. Filters what's here, or maybe if there's nothing at all, it won't put it to the top, maybe? I don't know how that works, huh? But cool, so you can do all these missions and stuff like that, which we'll, we'll definitely give a try uh, next episode. Next episode's, like, kind of going to be at, like, the heel of our pants, like, uh, seat of our pants? That's probably the better word. Um, community goals. What are community goals? Wait, what? I feel like I went from one person to the other one. Now I feel bad. Community goals. Oh. Oh. Community goals are collaborative effort and middle of action. Trying to achieve spin throughout the support of independent pilots currently available. Oh, okay. So this is probably at the station itself. Not like universe wise. Or maybe it's like a certain distance. But if I recall, wasn't there like. Weren't we? Wasn't there like when I first played, I remember there was like we were moving like iron or metal or i mean i sure it wasn't iron or even the metal but it was like some sheets or something like you know for building a station and i think we were going out like somebody could correct me and even tell me if that was the case but it was like a thousand light years and we went to this like kind of abandoned station it was kind of creepy and dark and um the idea is you'd, you'd bring your materials there and uh, you got you know good uh you actually got some good money out of it but i think it was like a community driven thing so there was like you know, hundreds, if not thousands of commanders partaking in such a, you know, mission to help uh, bring these materials. And I think what happens, I don't know if it's a weekly thing or monthly or what, but over time, the, I guess, I don't know if it's automatic or the devs do something, but basically the station becomes, you know, built. And, you know, so it starts from nothing, you know, th things happen and it, just, it has a bunch of like steps. And over time, you know, like we, the players actually are helping colonize space. And getting more stations out there. And so since I played, there's probably like a lot of random, like very distant outposts that at one point didn't exist. And it was because of the players themselves that partook in such a, you know, activities. But uh, anyways, a lot of cool stuff here. Well, we'll have to definitely uh, play around with this stuff. I think next time it'll be probably just like honestly checking out a few of the, uh, the basic missions and uh, seeing what we can do, you know going from there honestly uh, it'll be interesting it's definitely gonna be like a very um okay so there's a store system so i guess you earn credits by you can buy credits i think 
and then you can earn. Oh yeah, see my arc eighty nine. So I think you can earn these over time. I saw something at the main menu. I think it was like five four hundred a week, or is it four hundred a month? I forget. But anyways, you earn these over time, and then you can buy little skins and things like that, which is kind of cool because um, you know it helps development in a sense. I mean, it's not a monthly sub or anything like that. And so basically, this is a way to support the ve developers of the game, but at the same time, you can still earn it in game. Yes, it's a lot longer. It's more of a grind, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. You know, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna argue that it takes a long time. But I guess if you're a regular, frequent flyer of this game, and you've played from day one, you probably have close to a lot of these, or you're getting there, or I don't know. And plus, you don't need to get them all. Like, uh, you know, for example, some of these look really cool. Like these look really cool. Where, you know, some of these might look boring. Like, this looks boring here to me. You know, even this looks kind of boring. This not so bad. So, you know, I wouldn't want these guys. I'm not going to buy those, you know. So, there's there's things that you'd consider buying and not buying. So, and they have them in packs too. So, if you want to unlock them in a batch or whatever. Oh, they got, like, alphabets and stuff you can do. And cockpit customization. Oh, oh that is so cool. That is creepy. Oh, it's you with a bobblehead. Oh, I thought that was, like, an alien body. Um, <laughs> I don't know who these people are. I don't, I don't, I guess there's some kind of lore. Is that Sputnik or something? Bobblehead? Nav beacon, never mind. <laughs> Apparently, I don't know what a, a nav beacon looks like. Uh, is that a cactus? It's just some plant, alien plants. That's cute. Okay. Ship kits. What's a ship kit? Oh, they're just, oh, they're like, oh, look at this. Oh, look at this, guys. If you want to increase your uh, speed of your ship, you can add some spoilers to it. <laughs> anyways, that's that's cool. So that that's what that is, anyways. Uh, and then there was one more thing I wanted to play with I saw here. How do, oh, gosh, there we go. Um, Hollow me, I think. There you go. I think this is your character. Ah, here you go. So eventually, there's going to be actual walking in this game. Uh, clearly, you can see they're not quite ready. It looks like I'm literally in something right here. What is, what is this going on right here? Am I being like, oh no, these, oh my leg. Anyways, uh, I'm red. I'm black. I'm red and black. Okay, so uh, I guess you can change your suit colors. Oh, this is so cool. Oh, so you have to, oh, you have to unlock some of these. Oh, there we go. Am I supposed to like that set? What is this thing? Oh no, I want this thing. Sleeves. Oh wait, oh is this- Oh! Oh! Wait, 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 wait. So is this like outer- f This is a suit, and then this is like outer fit. Oh! So there's a set you can do. Okay. Oh no, we don't have the, the money for that. Apparently, we can't afford a, a, an actual set yet. Well, that's too bad. But we have apparently some individual pieces. Oh, no, we don't. Oh, my, my mistake. Okay. So right now, you're basically a naked, crazy person. Okay. What about helmets? Oh, I actually like that one. Oh, that one's already selected. Or you can do this one, which I think is what they were showing before. Helmet always on, only in emergencies. Can I say never on? <laughs> there you go. You can change your complexion. Oh, whoa. Hello. Bye-bye. What the? Oh, so it's not... Uh... Oh, preset. Sorry. Oh, okay. I was like, wow, uh, you don't get to choose things. But it's no, that's probably not it. Okay. Wait, what happened to my black lady? Was that her? I think that was her. I was going to work from her. So you get little moles and freckles and all this other stuff. You can do... Oh, look at... Oh, wow. She's really old. Young. Wait. How young is this? This does not feel young. Jesus, she looks old. Age. Oh, so you have your your skin color here. Okay, let's let's do something more in the. Yeah, let's do something around this lines. There you go. What is going on here? Oh gosh. Okay. 
Oh, head type veteran. Oh, heavy, smooth. Oh, there we go. Smooth like a baby bottom. Okay. And then you can, okay. I swear the color changed again. Pale. This is pale. Oh, I see. You can change your face. Scars. No, we don't need scars. Okay. Complexion. Oh, here you go. I want long, long hair, but they don't seem to do it. Darn it. There you go. Oh, that's so cool. I like a woman with actual eyebrows. Thank you very much. Yeah, it's blue, huh? I'm gonna let you know in a secret that's freaking purple as purple can be. Yeah, we'll just go with the blue. I might change this now. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm having fun here. And you just go forever on this. Like this, this is pretty cool though. Oh, you can change your eye. Oh, look at this. What the hell is this one? Cyborg 01. Cyborg 01. Oh, wow. Oh, you know what? I want that. That's actually... Okay, that's creepy. Milky. Milky. Yeah, they, they call it milky. I'm, I'm pretty sure if your eyes look like that, you need to see a doctor now. Not, not tomorrow. Now. Ow. That looks like she got beaten on that one. Is there like, oh, oh, so you look at the customization. I didn't realize that. Yeah, screw that. We're not going into all that. Anyways, this is pretty cool stuff. You cheek type, accessories. Okay. <laughs> I don't think that's going to match out oh, oh, well. Eyewear. Oh, cool. Wait, did I just do... Oh, never mind. I don't think we can do that. Oh, they're bought. Okay, apparently people with glasses, uh, their lives are already expensive enough. They got to pay for it in game two now. <laughs> Anyways, I'll just gonna, I'm just going to leave this be. I'm just going to say save and select slot. Sure. There you go. Confirm. That is me now. That looks pretty cool. I did want to edit something on there, but... Uh, Let's see one thing. I wanted to change the outfit from red to something else because that was a little too much, I think. There you go. That's, <laughs> That's even too much now. I like it. Okay, my friends. I think we're we're good. Um, at least we have our, uh, our commander now. And... <laughs> Her, it looks like her nose is broken from the picture. Anyways, we'll continue next time. I hope you guys enjoyed this. Thank you so much for watching. Please don't forget to subscribe, comment, like, all that fun stuff. And we'll see wonderful people next time. Have a wonderful day. Goodbye.